Hey everyone, today in Rhino I want to show you something that I think everybody should know and should be aware of when modeling with extrusions in Rhino. So here you can see two models which look virtually the same, but one is much more flexible than the other and let me show you what I mean. So I really like to work with direct selection in Rhino and direct selection is when you hit control and shift at the same time and then you are able to click a surface even within a poly surface. So this is a poly surface. If I click on it normally, you can see all the surfaces that are connected are selected. But if I hold shift and control at the same time, I can select each surface separately and also lines or curves or edges. In connection to the gumball is a really handy and fast way to model. So for example on this right one I can now hit shift and control and draw over this side of the model and then what I can do is I can make that model smaller, I can select those surfaces and I make it wider and immediately I have completely different part in within seconds. Let's undo that and try that with this one. So here again, the direct selection mode and what happens is I can only select a few lines and edges. If I want to move that in any way, you can see nothing really happens. It's very stiff and not very flexible and even if I select one edge here or even if I select one poly surface edge here, you can see the whole perimeter is one singular edge compared to here each edge is separated and all the surfaces start and end where they should so let me show you what I did wrong here and what I did in order to mitigate that problem so let's go into shaded mode, which we are all familiar with. And what I prepared is a simple rounded rectangle here. And what I want to do is I want to extrude that rectangle tapered. So let's go to surface tools and found, find our extrude tapered um, tool. And um, let's flip it with F and enter. And that is our basic shape. So if we just extrude it and keep it as a solid, um, you will see what happens if I type in the height of 30. You can see that the outer perimeter, the outer surface is one um, continuous surface. It creates one surface from that curve. And that's fine if we want to quickly model something, but I'd like to be flexible and I sometimes don't know what I want to change later on. So let's model it the right way. So the first thing is we need to select our curve and then go to explode. Let we create our curve segments. So let's select all of them and then again go to extrude curve tapered. The other thing we need to do is go, go up here and click on solid, no. So that will only create the outer surface of the, of the tapered extrusion. So we can now select our extrusion height of 30 and hit enter. Now it created these outer surfaces and you can see they're all separated. So now the next step is I want to select all of them and then go to join again. So what that creates our joined outer surface and also our original curve is joined again because it's a little bit less cluttered if we join those curves again. And the last step in order to create a solid is to go to solid tools. And there we have a tool called cap planar holes. And that will create our caps on the top and the bottom. And now with this shape, we can freely select any of those uh, outer uh, surfaces, uh, make the overall shape wider, select those surfaces and make it smaller. So I think this is the more flexible way on how to create such a shape. And what I would like is for you to be mindful of how you extrude surfaces so you can work flexibly and fast. I know these are few more steps, but I think they're worthwhile because now I don't have any headache going forward. And if the model gets more complex, 
I am sure that those initial surfaces are correct. So I hope you learned something today in this short tutorial. If you did, like, comment and subscribe for more videos. And as always, see you soon.